Hello and welcome to this presentation of Hailstorm. I'm Laurent Binchiller from APFL. This is joint work with Ashwin Go from University of Toronto and Willie Chanapur from University of Sydney. So Hailstorm is a system that is designed to improve load balance, uh, both compute and storage in existing distributed databases. So by improving load balance, we remove bottlenecks on individual database instances. And as a result, we can achieve higher throughput and better resource utilization. So here's a preview of the results that I will present later in this talk. This is for a production trace that we got from Nutanix and that we're executing on an eight instance MongoDB database. Here we compare the throughput in thousands of operations per second, both for MongoDB without Hailstorm, as well as for MongoDB with Hailstorm. And as you can see, by using Hailstorm, we achieve almost three times higher throughput for this particular trace. Now in this talk, I will first go through some background on distributed databases, the load and balance problem, as well as shard rebalancing. I will then present the Hailstorm architecture, what it is, how it works, and what are the key techniques that we're using. Finally, we will look at some performance results. So let's start with the background. So here we have an example of a distributed database. And a distributed database consists of multiple instances running on separate nodes in a data center. Distributed databases shard or partition data across instances in order to store large data sets. So here we're showing an example of a generic database with a number of instances. Each database instance bundles a storage engine that is responsible for persisting the data on files on the local disk. Then you have clients that interface with distributed databases to store and query data. So the database translates the client's operations into individual data accesses and data storage requests that it then routes to the instances that are responsible for the corresponding partition or partitions. So databases support multiple operations, and I'm going to present the three main operations that are found in most databases. So the first is a single key read or a get operation. In this case, the client asks the database to get a value that is associated with a particular key, here ki. And the database, because it does the partitioning, it knows which instance is responsible for the partition that is associated with that key and forwards the request there, here instance zero, which will then use its storage engine to read the data from disk and return the value. So that's for the get. Now the second operation is a write operation or put. So in this case, the client sends a database a key value pair. So let's say here KIVI that it wants to store. Now the database again will contact the instance that is responsible for the associated partition, send it the request, and that instance will then use the storage engine to write the value at the appropriate location on disk. Finally, the third operation is a range read operation in which the client wants to read a range of keys. So he wants to read the values associated with those keys. And in this case, the database forwards the request to each database instance that stores a part of the key range. So here, let's assume that there's only two, instance zero and instance n. Then each of these instances will use its storage engine to read the data from disk. And as you can see, it might take different amounts of time depending on how much data it needs to read. When they're done, they send the values back and the database assembles the final results of all the values that it returns to the client. Now let's talk about load and balance. And there are two main causes of load and balance in distributed databases. The first cause is the presence of skew across database instances. So skew can occur for many reasons. For example, it can be that a key is more popular than others, or it could be that the sharding function assigns more data to one instance. In this slide, we are showing a situation where one instance, instance zero, has a lot more data on disk than the other instances. And this can cause capacity problems because the local disk has to store all that data locally. Uh, they might not have the necessary capacity to do so, but more importantly, this situation can cause uneven accesses because now that instance will be doing a lot more work since it has a lot more data and that will cause more IO as well as more CPU to be used on that instance and this could lead to a load and balance and specifically an undesirable scenario where that instance becomes a bottleneck for the entire database. 
Now, the second cause of load and balance in distributed databases is background operations. So in this work, we're mostly interested in what is called LSMs, that is log structure merged trees. So these are a type of storage engines that are very popular and they're especially effective for large data sets that do not fit in memory. That is why they're used widely in existing distributed databases. LSMs are optimized for write heavy workloads by writing data in a log, but they also execute background operations, which we call compactions, to maintain the on-disk data structure in order to allow for fast reads. So these compactions basically involve sorting and merging files in order to make the read operations faster so that you can easily locate the data. These compactions are both CPU and IO intensive. And this can be a problem because they interfere with the main database operations and can cause load and balance. So here, for example, the storage engine that is running on instance zero is compacting the LSM on disk. And if these are the heavy compactions that are running on this instance, it can cause severe load and balance. It can cause queries to be delayed and transactions to be aborted. So what do distributed databases currently do to address load and balance? Many databases only target the first cause of load and balance, which is skew. And what they do is they support shard rebalancing or resharding. So resharding is basically sharding again. That is, it involves migrating an entire shard or parts of the shards from one database instance to another in order to hopefully improve the load balance and to remove the hotspot on the instance that's already overloaded. Now, here's an example of the database migrating part of the data from instance zero onto the other instances. Of course, in this case, the database will have to migrate more data before it gets really to a situation that is completely balanced. But in summary, shard rebalancing often involves migrating data off of machines that are already overloaded, which is not great because it increases their load and they're already overloaded. And the second thing is it's often slow and too late to really have a meaningful impact. So in summary, there's skew at the database layer and there's skew at the disk layer that is caused by the storage engine, specifically by background tasks such as compactions. Now, when those two are combined, it can lead to very significant performance degradation as one node that has more data to store, it will also have to run more compactions and therefore it's gonna get into a vicious circle where the performance will degrade more and more. So now that I have presented the background, let's look at Hailstorm. Key idea in Hailstorm is to disaggregate storage and compute. So this is a well-known way to scale each resource independently. And we use two specific techniques. So the first one is called fine-grained storage pooling. And what it involves is pooling all the disks together within a rack and splitting all the data for every instance in that rack in blocks and spreading all those blocks uniformly across the disks. So in, if we do that, we achieve storage load balance. So that targets the first problem of scaling storage. The second technique that we use is compaction offloading, where an overloaded instance, an instance that already has high load and that needs to run a compaction, can potentially outsource that compaction to another instance that has potentially less load and therefore more CPU available to run the compaction. And by compaction offloading, we're able to improve the compute load balance significantly. Now, this is what we do in this work. So we introduce the Hailstorm file system and we change the storage architecture from what you have on the left, which is what we have been talking about so far, with what you have on the right with this new Hailstorm file system layer that's in between. And the key idea is that we simply replace the local file system that is used by the storage engines to store data on the local disk with the Hailstorm file system that will split data into small blocks typically one megabyte, and spread these blocks across all disks uniformly in order to achieve storage load balance. Now the Hailstorm distributed file system is a drop-in replacement for the local file system. And the key idea with replacing this local file system is that with this new file system, we can support fine-grained storage pooling and compaction offloading. So how does this work? In practice, we spread all the blocks in a deterministic order. So each storage engine has its own files that are automatically 
cut up in small pieces, small blocks that are then spread deterministically. That means that each storage engine can locate and access its own data independently uh, without the need for something like a centralized metadata server. The second thing is that this file system makes compaction offloading efficient because by spreading blocks everywhere. Now, if you need to run compaction offloading on another machine within the rack, you don't need to transmit the data from the original machine. All you need to do is send the file metadata to that new machine that is going to run the compaction, and that file metadata will allow the new machine to locate the blocks and therefore run the compaction on behalf of the original machine. Now, this is a summary. This is an overview of what it looks like in practice. So, Hailstorm will pull all the disks together within the rack and spread the data blocks around. And as you can see here, each storage engine has a specific color and its associated blocks, uh, meaning its associated files, are stored on the local disks in the bottom. And as you can see, everything is well spread and the system achieves high load balance. So let's now see how Hailstorm scales compute. And as mentioned previously, Hailstorm uses compaction offloading. Now, the way that this works is that we modify the storage engine just a little bit. So we modify the code of storage engines in order to intercept compaction tasks. And each compaction task will be intercepted. And if the machine that is trying to run this compaction does not have the compute or storage capacity to execute it locally, then we outsource the compaction. So we find the machine that has the lowest CPU usage within the rack and we share the compaction there. So we ask that machine to run the compaction, which will then spawn a new process to run that compaction. Here you can see that this process is colored in blue because we are sharing the file metadata that allows that particular process to access the same files, the same blocks, right? as the original storage engine. And this is safe because it's only going to access the files in a read-only fashion. So it doesn't need to modify them. It simply needs to read them to run the compaction and then produce new files that it will then send to the storage engine, again, by sharing the metadata, allowing the storage engine to install the result of the compaction and to take ownership of those files. It's not hard to see that if you do this over time, the compute load will be spread more evenly across all database instances within the rack. So now that we looked at the Hailstorm system, let's move on to the evaluation. And in this case, we're going to use eight 16 core machines, the machines of Samran, the use SSDs, and a fast network. And we're going to use two databases. The first is MongoDB, which is probably the most popular distributed database today uh, and MongoDB has a key value store interface. The second one is TyDB, which is an increasingly popular distributed database that offers SQL transactions. Now, both of these uh, distributed databases use RocksDB as a storage engine, and RocksDB is a storage engine developed by Facebook that is LSM-based, and that's probably the most widely used storage engine uh, today. Now, in the following slides, we're going to compare the baseline, that is the vanilla database without Hailstorm, with Hailstorm. So the database deployed on top of the Hailstorm file system along with compaction offloading. And we're going to compare in each case the uniform key distribution versus a Zipfin key distribution, which is skewed. So we start with MongoDB and with the right intensive workload. So we use the Yahoo Cloud Serving benchmark. So a YCSB A, which consists of 50% reads and 50% writes uh, for this. And we're comparing the baseline uh, with Hailstorm for both uniform and Zipfian key distributions. In each case, we measured the throughput and thousands of operations per second. And there are two takeaways from this slide. So the first is that Hailstorm achieves load balance when the key distribution is skewed using storage pooling and compaction offloading. So you can see in the Zipfian case, that we achieve over 2.2x higher throughput, and that throughput is very close to the uniform throughput in this particular case. So by using storage pooling and compaction offloading, we are able to significantly increase performance if there is skew. Now, the second takeaway from this slide is that by running Hailstorm in the uniform case, so if the key distribution is uniform, 
then there is no problem with running Hellstorm. The performance will not degrade. It will stay the same. And in this case, you can see that the uniform case is the same for both. So now let's look at read intensive workloads. And to do that, we're going to use YCSBB. So YCSBB is a read intensive workload, which has 95% reads and 5% writes. And in this case, the performance gains that we get with Hailstorm are about 46% for the Zipfune case. These are lower than for writes. And the reason is that since there is much less writing happening in this particular case, only 5%, then compaction of loading does not really get the chance to be very helpful, and most of the gains are due to storage pooling. So next, we consider the performance in a scan-intensive workload, that is YCSBE, which performs a large majority, 95% of range queries and 5% of writes. Scan workloads are very important in practice. They're very frequent in real-world applications, and this is why it's important to look at the performance there as well. Now here we notice a very large improvement of over 22x when using Hailstorm in the Zipfian scenario, that is in the skewed scenario. And you might wonder why that happens. Well, this is because a range query generally involves most, if not all of the database instances. And therefore, if there is skew in the key distribution, a large fraction of the range queries will involve a single database instance. That instance will become a bottleneck. And since that instance is overwhelmed, it will cause queries in turn to stall waiting for data and performance will degrade. Now, in addition to that, because that machine stores a lot more data, it will also need to run more compactions. And these compactions will, of course, further degrade the performance. Now, this does not happen with Hailstorm. None of this happens with Hailstorm thanks to storage pooling and compaction offloading. And this is why we get 22x performance improvements in this case. Now, finally, I want to show the results for TIDB. So TIDB is a SQL compatible distributed database that is developed by PINCAP. And in this case, we're gonna consider the industry standard TPCC and TPCE benchmarks. And we're gonna compare the baseline case, so standalone TIDB with TIDB running on top of Hailstorm. And we're gonna compare in each case the performance metric of each particular benchmark, as well as the dollar to performance ratio. And we can easily conclude from these results that Hailstorm's improved throughput for TIDB by 1.5x, or uh, equivalently, it offers cost reductions of approximately 50%. Now, this was just a very short overview of the main results in the paper. The paper itself includes a lot more results and a lot more details, and I encourage you to check it out if you're interested. Now, to conclude, I have presented Hailstorm, a distributed system that improves load balance in LSM-based distributed databases. Hailstorm achieves higher throughput and resource utilization for existing databases, so it works and is compatible with existing databases and requires only minimal changes to support compaction offloading. And the key idea in Hailstorm is compute and storage disaggregation and subsequently scaling compute and storage through two techniques, fine-grained storage pooling that allows to scale storage and compaction offloading that allows to scale compute. And with this, I'm done. I would like to thank you for your attention. And I would ask that if you're interested in this work, please stay tuned for updates. We're going to release the Hailstorm source code shortly on GitHub and you're more than welcome to check it out and play with it. Thanks for watching, bye.